Okay, in this video, I'm gonna talk about cinematography for documentary filmmakers. What do you need to know? So you see the pink sky? That's why I'm up now. Where is my mic? Mic on. Sun is coming up. Let's see if I can get this on the roof of the car. So today is supposed to be like a little bit worse uh, in terms of like yeah, weather, like there's gonna be a bit of clouds. But if you look at the background, you can sense that this is the day where you're gonna get this amazing uh, sunrise. So the way I think about it is usually I look at like how much clouds are we gonna get right now there's some clouds so you're starting to see like pink I usually plan what I do after that so now it looks like it's gonna look amazing when the sun goes up I have a little bit uh, stress for time so I need to get going but that's why I'm out today and not tomorrow because tomorrow is gonna be all blue sky and all that and that kind of sucks, it's boring. Okay, we're off. So first off, you need to apply the 30 second at least rule. So to every shot, you should always shoot like 30 seconds to a minute, never less. Like always let it roll. That's super important. Editors know this, kid is playing. And also strengthen the story by picking a perspective. Like to me cinematography is all about picking a perspective. Not a perspective like this, like from a low angle or anything, but choosing a style that creates a stronger story. So for instance, is it all handheld close-ups or is it all handheld wide shots or is it just stable on a tripod? That type of stuff. Oh yeah, and also like embrace limitations. If you have a limitation, like for instance, now everything is dark in my face, use that in order for you to like create a mood or a feeling or something. Just like use the limitations that you have to your advantage, whatever they are. Like they could be anything, but limitations are good. They create a style and a perspective just by having them. Like if you just have one lens, that in itself just forces you to work a certain way. This goes for like how you structure or set up a scene as well. Like less is more, don't overdo it in terms of like having a bunch of shots. You don't need all the shots you can think of. Limit yourself, sometimes just have like one shot and it's a wide one and that's it. Kolla där var en fisk. Det var en fisk där i vattnet som plaska. Jo, säkert. And also like the story, it's all about like subtext. Don't just focus on what's going on in a scene. Think about like what to show that is telling the story behind what's happening in action. Like focus on details, focus on things that tell the story but isn't obvious to people. So just look at like the inner story of the story or the characters in the story. Oh, looking for a place to eat pancakes. How are you liking that backdrop though? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nice morning to be paddling. Ooh, ooh, Tristan. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm fresh, Papa. Yeah. Will you not bow there? Papa. Papa, bow. So you bow there? Yeah. Hello, Nara. No. Chilla, Tristan. Chilla, Tristan. Yeah. Papa. 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 Mm. Ska vi åka bort till någon sten där borta då och äta pannkaka? 
Måste vi filma uppåt? Pappas ansikte ska vi vara med. Mm. Hej, pappa. Yeah, and also don't let tech ruin your shoot. Like use tools that you're comfortable with. And then like that will create a more intimate and responsive DOP. Du ger mig den där. Du ger mig den där. Här kan vi väl vara. Ja. Ah. Vilken bra plats. Nu. Let's see. Så. Och så klipper du upp där. Nej, nej, inte ta ut nu eller? Då kan vi tappa saker. Vi får vänta lite. Ja, du ska få. Jag ska bara se om vi kan tända den här. Annars kanske inte kan göra pannkaka för jag tror inte pappa har någon tändare. Det var ju jättetråkigt. Ja. Nej. Och då gör man den här hemma. Ja, men den här ska ju funka ändå. Så so this was <laughs> failure. Nej, nej, kände. Här kan jag säga. Nej, kände. Hej. Det står Tristan på den. Någon annan Tristan som har den. Har den? Ja. Åh oh, nej! Annan Annan Okej, okay, så... So, went out paddling. Didn't really work out. Like it was a nice paddle and all, but... Didn't manage to make the breakfast we were making, so we gotta head home. This little guy is... Playing with a snorkel. And lastly, don't shoot generic B-roll. It's just boring as hell and it just looks like everything else that you see. Shoot stuff that is like a personal perspective of things and think about how it can add to the story because that's really what people care about. It's not like it being pretty or anything. That's so secondary to telling a story, really. Let me know in the comment section what you think is good documentary cinematography and uh, yeah, what iconifies it. And if you have any films that you think I should watch uh, that has great cinematography, let me know. Okay, what's up? So I'm in Oslo, I'm waiting for my flight. It was kind of cancelled, I couldn't get on with my luggage. So I'm waiting for my other luggage so that I can rebook my flight. But I thought, in the meanwhile, why not answer one of your questions? So, Diego Alvarado asks, Hi John, I want to ask you something that is hard for me as a filmmaker. How do you keep caring? In this day it's hard to fight for, to give a message the world sometimes is a hard place. And then I don't fucking care about 4K, fancy transitions or color grading, okay. So, for me I think, if you think about it in, in like, a simple sense if you just make stuff that you care about and make stuff that you actually think is fun to make then it's gonna be much easier it's that simple I usually try to think about it in like a give-and-take type of perspective when I do advertising stuff certain things I have to do that is like super boring but I do them anyway because they can help me invest in my new projects they can get me some time to do things and then that will eventually lead to something that you know makes something fun out of it so that's how you should think about it like try to reinforce what you want to do through stuff that is boring if you can only do boring stuff as long as you do your passion projects as much as you can you don't have to do passion projects all the time but if you at least do a couple of them a year it's gonna be so much more fun let me just see if my bag is here not yet starting to question all this last luggage and it's not here i need to go check this but anyway i thought that was just like a quick answer to that question uh, but for me making my feature films is like super important for me also making the right type of client work is also super important so if you do that you can have much more fun like i always try to do the client work that's fun 
and this is one of those things. I was in Turkey filming a short doc. Tell you more about that later though. So see you guys. Did, it, did you talk to the police as well? No. So I'm gonna put my seat belt on again, but that was a fun little accident. <laughs> Get insurance, guys. Wait.